Yo, what's good guys? Another video here. Today we got how Brits really view Americans. Let's see what y'all gotta say. Let's see how much y'all hate us, how much y'all like us. Whatever y'all opinion on us. Let's find out. A lot about differences between the UK and the USA. What have you come to believe about that? So, I, my biggest takeaway from being in America as a Brit is it's like finding out my dad had a kid with another woman that I never met and we meet for the first time and I'm like you're kind of me but you're not me <laughs> it's like you spent a bit more money on you that stuff <laughs> made you believe in yourself your mom was clearly much nicer or kinder <laughs> and you go tough. oh Americans like we're kind of the same but it's like Brits with self-belief. Brits with self-belief is what Americans ha, ha, are. Ha, ha, ha. He said, "He said we some Brits with self-belief." That stuff. That's funny. That's is, is one of the different. There's there's lots of pros and there's lots of cons for both. That's but funny. That was my overwhelming, overwhelming takeaway. The second biggest takeaway I have is that Brits don't really truly realize how impactful the British accent is mm. until you leave Britain and the metaphor I came up with for describing the British accent sorry for the cut gotta love random phone calls in the middle of my videos it's always the best anyways before I've so rudely interrupted back to the video Brits is imagine everywhere else in the world there's a salmon famine right and a British accent is like selling <laughs> salmon and the only place in the world where there's an abundance of salmon is in the UK. So if you're there using that, it basically gets you nothing in the UK, but you suddenly leave or go out <laughs> anywhere else and you're exotic. Anywhere else. Yeah. And they think you're smarter. They think you're more attractive. I'm done. Nah, he ain't lying though. Cause uh, I met one guy from the UK. I met him at a bar actually. And we sat down, we had some drinks and I even asked him, so what do you think of these American girls? And he goes, Bruh, they love me. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. But uh, I he ain't wrong. Listen to all to all my uh British dudes watching the video. If, if you want it, if you want to fucking find a quick way to get a girlfriend, use that accent on some American girls. I promise you. I promise you it'll work. I promise you. Um, yeah. It's Americans incredible. often ask me when they talk about that, <clears throat> and I do think it's true that. Uh, Brits have an unfair advantage in America. Of They'll do. It's fucked. Uh, they, so, like, everyone presumes that we're part of the aristocracy or something. Um, and they often ask me, well, what do you think of American accents in the UK? And that was a really interesting question. I, I bet like, you they don't give a shit. I actually don't know. <laughs> I think it's like, certainly for me on girls, it's like kind of sexy. It feel, that, that feels exotic in some way. Uh, definitely energetic, mm. overly enthusiastic and excitable. Uh, especially when you've got one American in a bunch of Brits. When you're the Brit in a bunch of Americans, you say, oh, well, you know, everyone's just sort of excitable and first line cocaine energy. But when you drop one <laughs> American in a, a, like, Newcastle or something, oh my God, who is that? It's a nuclear <laughs> warhead surrounded by a bunch of sh swords. <laughs> That's um, tough. <laughs> yeah, I think since being here, you know, it's made me reflect. Whenever I go to the UK, we got I, I got to experience like a night out with a bunch of British people. Just I just want to see I just want to see what happens. I just yo, let me know in the comments if I visited the UK, which one of y'all who who who's going to be my tour guide? Come on, we need tour From guides. Step up. Tour I, guides, I step hate up. being disparaging about the UK. Like it's the country that gave me and you our start. We both went to university there. We both had our first jobs there. We both built businesses there. Uh, I think we're both in one form or another still registered. You'll be on company's house in some vestigial old f fucking thing. And I hate, I, I really wish that I didn't sort of talk badly about it, but you sent me a tweet last week and I've been watching Bald and Bankrupt. To be fair, I low-key can relate to that too, because like, obviously that's how I feel about the US. Like, I don't like talking bad about, you know, my home. Like, this is my homeland. That's where I grew up. This is where most of my friends are. You know, most my family, pretty sure all my family that I know of anyway, like, you know, most of the people who I am around on a regular basis who I actually care about live here. I don't like talking shit about the place, but at the same time, you can acknowledge the downfalls to help 
push you forward to become better awesome youtube channel um i invited him on the show he replied he said he'd love to but he's actually trying to actively wind down his uh public exposure so he said he keeps getting asked for too many selfie photos in tesco uh and he does strike me as the kind of man that probably doesn't want to be over exposed you know he was doing for the people that don't know this guy who does kind of like dark tourism stuff he got trafficked across the border into mexico oh shit. he was d detained in a russian jail for a while damn and then he decided he was going to take on the final boss of dangerous places which was seaside towns of the uk and um he just travels around sort of looking at all of these these bad places and um that sound... there's a tv you show that like tweet that. last week which i think nails it which is i think i've seen the that uk guy has the sixth largest economy in the world but people are confused the uk doesn't have the sixth largest economy in the world london has the sixth largest economy in the world mm -hmm. it just has a really poor country attached to a very rich city damn and then there was another one which was u.s universities um so i think in the top 10 universities in the world the uk has three and the u.s has three yet the u.s outputs five times those U u.s universities five output five times the number of entrepreneurs that those UK universities do. So That's in theory, crazy. these people are as intelligent as one another mm -hmm. um, across. And I wonder if that is because of like the difference in the mindsets, because it's definitely ingrained when you grow up here in your head from a young age of you can do anything if you work hard enough and you focus and you grind and you go for it and if you do not quit and you just keep doing it it will eventually happen that is like ever since you know in school you know family friends like you know that's what you know you always tell the kids like yeah oh you can do anything let's get it you know like it's like i think it's oxford cambridge and another university kings maybe durham maybe yeah and um what's interesting when you go across global university rankings and outputs of entrepreneurs in the study that was shared the uk university the, which was oxford so that's the number one for entrepreneurial output was 50th across the whole world despite the fact we rank so yeah. high in education mm. yet actually transforming that into entrepreneurship doesn't seem to happen and i wonder again whether that's the self-belief thing you Probably. also see this weirdly and i could be mistaken here I have this bias that I think Brits are fundamentally more funnier than Americans. Mm -hmm. However, way more great stand-up comedians that are American than British. Like we have Ricky Gervais, we have Jimmy Carr. Yep. And then in terms of global appeal outside of that, there's not a huge amount more. And my theory behind that is- Honestly though, nah, y'all British people are funny as shit. <laughs> like for real, especially, Matter of fact, after this video, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch a Jimmy Carr video. Mark my words. Mark my words. That's gonna be. I don't know if it'll come out before this or after this, but that's what I'm watching after this video. So why do you have the funniest people, yet not the the biggest stand-up comedians out of those names there? And I think the same crab, crabs in a bucket mentality that makes people so funny because we can shoot people down and shoot ourselves down is the same thing that makes it absurd and absurd as a concept to go and get on stage and say, I want to be a funny person. Like that in the UK. <clears throat> so I think the funniest guy in the world right now is probably in a Greg's in Wigan, <laughs> or he is in a pub in Portsmouth. And because of that crabs in a bucket mentality, Americans are way more likely to get on stage and go, I want to be a funny person because that's part of the American DNA. Of Meanwhile, course. the Brits who I think are actually funnier mm. don't end up doing as much stand-up. Entrepreneurial as well as entre It's like, I don't know if y'all ever heard of like the grasshopper reference where people will get crickets that was crickets not grasshoppers but they'll take crickets and they'll put them into a small container and their parents will jump they'll hit their heads on the container and they'll stop jumping and then once they have kids those kids never even try to jump because and those kids never try to jump so by the time you're at the second generation nobody even got their head hit by the container and yet they're st all afraid to jump it's Brit. no real yeah but you know even with... i said that wrong but i hope y'all and i'm not the one that came up with that but i hope y'all see what i'm saying with that within that that sort of self-belief it's one and the same i think it's agency yeah. it's the preparedness to go against the grain uh and you know this I, i'm we're going to talk about uh subprime audiences later on um but you know this audience is like i would guess i would say like it's full of like a's and double a's of people especially the ones from the uk and i think the reason that this 
resonates. I'm not saying it to disparage the UK. I don't think either of us are, but to kind of reassure the people for whom they feel a little bit like a uh, square peg in a round country that sat in the UK, you know, some normal town, you're in fucking Wakefield or Carlisle <coughs> or Middlesbrough, <coughs> Rochdale, wherever you are. Uh, and you think, God, I, you know, this is the sort of conversations <laughs> I really love to have. This is the kind of thoughts that I think then about. I really want to have big dreams for myself. And then I, I. Nah, listen, do it. It's my message to any one of y'all. Like, just do it. Like, if you really want to make something happen, go for it. Why not? What do you have? Worst case scenario, it fails, then at least you tried. Like, I'll use an example with the YouTube channel. 10,000 subscribers on YouTube is insane. I made this channel for fun. I didn't think it was... And by the way, that ain't nothing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be like, ooh, I'm big on YouTube. Like, I ain't. I ain't shit. I'm trying to rebuild this channel, matter of fact. But, like, you can do... If you put your time into it and you just keep going, eventually it will succeed. I've been doing this YouTube channel for five years making videos. I started it during COVID when I was bored. Now I'm at 10,000 subscribers and I hope to keep growing, right? You know, I'd love to, by the end of this time next year, 2025, I'd love to have 20, 20,000 subscribers. That, that'd be sweet. But the only way you're going to get there is if you keep going and you push through the hard times and just make it happen. And will I be at 20K next year? I hope so. But I bet you anything, I'll keep posting. <laughs> And it's eventually, I will reach 20K. It's that mindset. And if you adapt that mindset of eventually it will happen, it will happen. We Guarantee struggle you. to resonate with the people around me. I really, really fail to do that. And I think I wish that I'd had, when I was younger, more reassurance that I wasn't the problem. I, I, you know, there's no value judgment. People that have big dreams, people that don't have big dreams. But yeah, there's nothing sure. inherently wrong with you having those dreams and there's no reason that you no reason you should pursue them castigated or have the piss taken out of you because you want to do something different exactly because you don't intend Preach. being born living working and dying within the same 20 mile radius of of you know where your parents grew up yes Preach, but my brother. even Preach. at a walking around level you see this so if you walk around america there's flags everywhere mm -hmm. there's kind of pride in the nation mm -hmm. if you walk around the uk and you see a flag you go, oh, fuck. They EDL might, member. <laughs> there might be a Nazi, which is crazy. Unless there's a football tournament, then everybody does it. That's, That's a weird crazy. paradox of the UK. Yeah. <laughs> so it's... My, bro, you see a flag, they think you a Nazi? That's wild. Out here, bro, everybody's got flags. It's not even just of the US, just whatever they support, you know? Like, if you support something and it has a flag, bro, a lot of time, people out here will put that right in front of their house. Like, whether it's politics, whether it's social shit, like, whatever. <laughs> they, Even at that level, it. you see this kind of pride at the nation level. And at the UK, it's almost like this weird autoimmune condition. Do that... you have any idea why the British football <laughs> team uses three lions rather than the St. George's Cross? Don't know. Isn't that interesting? Mm. Because I don't think Scotland does, and I don't think Ireland does, and I don't think Wales do. Mm. And I can't think of any other team. Actually the uh, England cricket guys will do the same thing. There must be a reason. Someone will be correcting me in the comments as we speak. Um, but that's, yeah, for the Americans that are listening, British national pride, like BNP, British national pride, I know it's not that, but like, it's just, it doesn't exist. And then you come over. Also, I think that's one thing that almost pisses British people off about us is that we are so i say us as in like americans we are like almost too excited to be like yeah we're the shit where it almost bites us in the ass in some ways because we're so focused on building our egos and pretending like we're the best at everything that everyone else is sitting there practicing and getting better than us like you know like you gotta make you got that's i think the big issue we have is the ego like i feel like we're like that crazy 21 year old like me you know we're that young we're that young cocky kid with a chip on our shoulder that thinks they know everything when we don't even know the beginning yet like in a lot of ways now in some ways don't get me wrong in some ways that confidence has been earned 
and we definitely deserve that confidence. But in other ways, we really haven't done nothing either. Like, we're way too... We're letting our ego take us down because we're bragging about the successes that our grandparents did instead of trying to make our own successes. But here, and it, it is nice. It's nice to hear that people have got, have got pride in their country. So the, the, probably the critique people have of us right now is that we're critiquing Britain way more than we are critiquing America. But I'd also point out that's part of being British. <laughs> you're way more naturally to critique yourself and to critique other people. And I do love that side of being British because you're way more self-analytical. Yeah. Um, Which also helps y'all in a lot of ways, right? Like when, when you can look at yourself and see your own flaws, then you know what to work on improving. I think in, ter in terms of other differences between the UK and the US that I've noticed in terms of benefits for Brits is because Brits like take the piss out of one another on average way more. Um, it means that you do have maybe that lowering self-belief, but you're almost a bit more anti-fragile. Mm. So if people do say a remark, you've already cracked a joke worse than that. That's where I'm going to have to disagree because at least speaking for me and my friends and my friend group and the people that I've hung out with for years, like there's no chill. You would think we hate each other. There is no, no limits. The shit that we have said to each other would probably land us in jail. Like there, without getting into specifics and all that, like, Nah, which I don't know if that's just the people I choose to hang around are like that. And maybe that's a more British quality that I just so happen to choose people around me that I have. But, and I'm not even going to say who does it more or whatever, because y'all might do it more on average. But at least there's a lot of Americans who are very much alike that, especially in my generation of, you know, talking shit and goofing around with the friends and you know being able to laugh at yourself and the past all your friends have particularly and i think the more northern in the country you go the more it that... is the further away from london that you yeah. get the more piss you have taken out exactly of you. whereas in america i think people are a lot more could be more fragile to comments like that whereas the brits mm, the same way maybe. i always say another difference there's two big differences that i think explain the differences between americans and brits so one is simple a b test of when you meet an american and they're super enthusiastic and excited and the Brits aren't. If you actually go historically back, there was a simple A-B test, which is when the boats came and said, hey, there's this promised land far, far away. You, we can't show you a video because videos don't exist yet. You may die on the boat. Do you want to come and visit this crazy land? The Brits were the ones who were like, what a ridiculous idea that is. I'm going to stay here. <laughs> I'm staying in Skegness. Yeah. And the Americans were the ones who were like, yeah, yeah fuck it, it, let's go. And that <laughs> yep. A-B test fundamentally explains it as well as when you think also i wonder if that i mean i feel like that's what he's getting into but that do you think that there is like a genetic reason for that like beyond cultural where all the people who were the go-getters and the hustlers well maybe not all of them but most of them that were the go-getters and the hustlers and the one that moved without being afraid are probably the ones that went to the u.s to have that big challenge and make something of themselves or at least try to and those who stayed back may have been the ones that were more nervous to put themselves out there like that think about it um historically americans have apart from pearl harbor and that was quite far away from america let's be honest have never had an attack on their homeland in recent history 9 11 not count um at the 9-11 really. yeah yeah there you go that's one example but i mean but that wasn't like a that was a one-off attack that wasn't like a military invasion so what he's getting at more is like a real invasion i think comparing that to the bombing like world war one and world war two like the whole city mm. like completely mm. destroyed mm. um so there's definitely more like scar tissue built up that makes brits i think a little bit more grittier in some I regards than americans as well that. yeah i don't know man i'm pessimistic I, yeah i can tell it's for certain people i had this discussion with piers morgan piers was like i i like i like people bringing me back down to to earth i i, I like the, the the mockery and stuff i'm like piers that's great for you 
it doesn't seem to work too well for me. Like my desperate requirement for validation and reassurance from the world, like wasn't being very satiated in Stockton, yeah. right? Or Newcastle. Uh, and then you come over here, one of the best things, and this is something that anybody anywhere on the planet should do. And this is one of the coolest life hacks I've taken since being in America. And you've What's seen that? me do it to you and you've like toe cold at a bunch of parties, which is when in America, at least in my group of friends, you are the new person in a group your friend that knows you and knows the group will introduce you and yeah. tends to do it in the best 30 second <laughs> show reel of you that anybody could yeah. get. You know, he's got this amazing marketing agency, he's a phenomenal writer and he's pivoting, he's kind of champagne homeless at the moment, he does all of these things. And like, that's a really lovely gesture. It's your friend, it's an opportunity for them to do something nice for you. Okay, well I do this kind of stuff, so I guess I'll, I'll speak on this, right? The way that at least I'll speak for myself, the way I think is I'm going to call you, ev like if you're my friend, I'm going to call you every name in the book to your face but say nothing but good things about you behind your back. Like that's just the way that I feel like friends should be. Like if you're going to say something negative, say it to their face. If you're not going to say it to their face, then shut up. <laughs> like, and when it comes to introducing people, like obviously let's say I'm introducing one friend here to friend a to friend b well i want friend a and friend b to be friends so i'm gonna big up friend a so friend b will give friend b an or friend b will give friend a an opportunity and get along like it's it's that simple like that's just i don't know i guess that's just normal here i didn't realize that was something that y'all don't do out there you it gives you the best impression on the group and it reminds you about what your friend kind of says about you behind your back yeah. when you're not there and of it's course. like it inflates you a little bit and makes yeah. you feel good and warm and stuff what would the friends should be build each other up if you knock, were knock each a other british down. friend being <laughs> introduced to british friends by a british friend it would be your worst ever story correct it's certainly the northern again this, this is the northern this is, thing this, I think. this this is george shit himself last week like <laughs> you know what i mean the to be fair we kind of do that too though like we'll be like yeah he's really awesome he's still a bitch though don't get it twisted he's, he's still he, he's still a straight bitch <laughs> still has wet dreams like, yeah. like you know um yeah it is interesting like the i guess we do both like we'll big we'll big you up but then once everybody starts getting comfortable that's when the jokes start flying and we're like look here you fucking extra tubby teletubby <laughs> like the introduction side how we introduce one another i've definitely found americans are much better at selling themselves immediately whereas i think brits often downplay themselves immediately there's a big difference there in terms of like ever so slight cultural differences but one of Which the reasons I comes why from what i was saying earlier I with think kids america has been so successful so far and one thing britain could improve upon is if you look at human beings i think what makes human beings if you put one human being in a jungle, um, it's that classic phrase that you put one human being in a jungle and meet, you've just introduced prey into the environment. But if you put a thousand human beings into the jungle, you've just introduced a apex predator of which the world's never seen before. Yeah. So the only thing that really makes us special, if you look at us, we don't hear that well compared to our animals. We're not that fast. We're not that strong. We're pretty shit across the board, but yeah. our ability to cooperate is what makes us unique. Correct. It's the classic Steve Jobs thing of, if you look to, um, I think it's energy efficiency in movement, humans are so far down the rankings. Like there's so many animals ahead of us in terms of to do a mile, how much energy they need to burn. But if you look at a human being on a bicycle, like human beings have just blown, blown through the charts. And he has this great quote, which is the computer is the bicycle of the mind. And if you then go back to, well, ultimately the only thing that makes us unique human beings, because we're shit about everything compared to other animals, mm. is our ability to cooperate. If you have a more enthusiastic society that supports one another more, mm. that you can cooperate more, which oh, yeah. means that you'll then have way more mm. economic output because in a certain... And I really think that just starts from, you know, the American dream or... You know what that's ingrained into you even from a kid growing up here that like you can do anything and i think because that's so heavily ingrained into us that we have that natural desire to let's boot like boost everybody up like yeah come on let's go let's get it like you know we got this <laughs> like you know, you go out with you go out with the boys and you feel invincible. Like, let's go. We're gonna take it all on. Like, no fear. A country that's more optimistic that goes, I've got this idea. 
a lot of naive Americans are like, great idea, let's yeah. do it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah for real. People, uh, uh, for a real. culture that's more maybe cynical mm -hmm. um, means that those ideas don't happen, which I think explains why across these universities, we have essentially the same IQ levels, the same intelligence levels. Mm -hmm. Better accents. Better accents. Yeah, I, I'll admit that. <laughs> but I'll admit five that. X the number accents. of entrepreneurs in America. In other news, this episode is... And... M -E -N -T -O -U -S dot com slash modern wisdom. Thank you very... Okay, that's the end of the video. Awesome. Yo, this was a... F really cool little something a little different like hey not what i expected to watch but like i thought this was going to be more of like a comparison video whereas it was just really two dudes talking but it was interesting and their insights were definitely true so i hope y'all liked the video comment subscribe ring the bell click all you know how youtube works and i'm out bye <laughs>